Uh, I appreciate it. But it, again, it's so great to see so many friendly faces. I am Eric Lucero. We've been telling lawyer jokes. So the one lawyer joke I can think of is, uh, if you take all the lawyers in the United States and you line them up around the equator, it would be a good thing. <laughs> so I am presently serving in my third term. And as was mentioned, I am across town diagonally, but I did grow up in New Brighton, which is in Ramsey County. So I know the area. I've driven over here many times when I was growing up. And uh, as a representative, standing for the values that each and every one of us stands for, lives for, and as we've heard spoken several times here, it is unfortunate the day in which we live because we have a majority. I serve in the House, and in the House right now, I'm in the minority. And we have a majority that believes just the opposite of everything, all of the ideals that we've heard so far. We know what makes this country great. We know why we are the most influential country in the world. And that is because we hold the idea that our liberties come from the Creator. And that it is the purpose of government to protect those liberties that we already have. And for hundreds of years, this country has stood for those ideals. And it didn't matter what your background was, you were allowed and afforded the opportunity to pursue happiness. You were not guaranteed to achieve happiness, but we are allowed the opportunity to pursue happiness. And many did. And unfortunately today, the majority is fighting to divide us. And as we know from Jesus Christ himself, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. And that is the path that the other side sees to victory. That is why you see their messaging dominated on hate and division. That's why it is even more important for us to continue to stand strong and stand for the truth. Because we need to leave a legacy that we've enjoyed to the next generation. We need to leave a legacy that allows somebody to work hard, sacrifice, and engage in delayed gratification to be able to pursue happiness and then leave an inheritance to their descendants. Not be taxed to death, not be told that you are racist and you're the, you've only achieved what you uh, have because of government or many of the other false notions that the other side continues to, to put out. But the truth is, what I have been fighting for and what I know Alexander stands for and will fight for as the next senator is life from conception to natural death. Our God-given rights to defend ourselves embodied in the Second Amendment. That religious liberty is incredibly important and one of the primary reasons our founding fathers fled. Get government out of our health care because we have only seen with more government our uh, uh, increases in cost and decreases in quality. And we heard Tanya speak, when it comes to the school board, our school districts have the word independent in them for a reason. They used to be independent school districts, but now they are nothing more than an extension, as Tanya mentioned, of state government and those that believe they know better. And let me finish with this. So we just took a vote here Monday of this week, or was it Tuesday? It was Tuesday of this week, trying to end the emergency powers of Governor Walls. We are now four months into this emergency. Emergency powers were originally designed for several days or weeks in the aftermath of a tornado, a flood, a fire, or some other similar disaster that required immediate decisions to be made and with the intention that the legislature was not in session. And therefore, the legislative branch would not be able to act as quickly. But we're now four months later, we are no longer in an emergency phase of COVID-19. We're in a management or a maintenance mode at this point. There is no, and the legislature's in session. There is no reason the governor needs to act unilaterally 
with his edicts with the stroke of a pen. Right, here, here. Yeah. And we, yes, exactly. We've heard talk of this mask mandate. How many in here or out here want, are looking forward to have government tell you, government walls tell you that you need to have a mask? No. Not a single hand, exactly. So on the House floor, one of the things I love doing, I love calling out hypocrisy. And so I love using their own words against them. So on the House floor, uh, I don't know if anybody here was watching, so you may have heard me say, keep Democrats, my message to you regarding masks, keep your laws off my body. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, just know that I'm going to continue to fight for the truth. There are many out there that are fighting for the truth. There are many out there that are scared, that are concerned, and they do not want to. They're the silent majority that doesn't want to make their opinions known because the other side is striking fear and hate uh, into society. But we know the truth. We're going to continue fighting, and that's why I'm so excited to elect Alexander this November to be able to serve, serve with him in the legislature. Thank you. Hey! Hey! We're getting closer to Alexander speaking. We have a special guest with us tonight, and it took a little bit to get her here, but we have the chair of the Minnesota.